Hello everybody and welcome back to Alex Elite Golf and welcome to this Sunday's Swing Quest. Now, this Sunday we've got somebody who's been at my favourite golf course in Portugal. And one of the reasons why he was picked, but also the second reason was he's struggling with a massive slice. So if you're struggling with a slice, today's video will definitely help you eradicate that. And it's all about what we can do with this at the top of the backswing. So this week we've got Danny, he's struggling with a slice and he entered through Instagram. Now, if you're someone who wants to actually have a chance of winning the Sunday Swing Quest, you've got to do one simple thing. You've got to follow me on all social media platforms, like this video, but also make sure you see the relevant posts on Instagram. So, like I said, he's struggling with a slice, and we're going to talk about what we can feel at the top of the back swing to get this club face under a little bit more control, but simply, hopefully, get rid of that curvature. Now, I always think of a slice as a two-part process. One, eradicate the curvature. Secondly, then we're going to start to work on right start line and start to work this ball back to target. But firstly, we've got to get rid of this curvature. So, hello everybody and welcome to this week's Sunday Swing Quest. We've got Danny and he's struggling with a slice. We mentioned at the start of the video, we're going to talk about how we can create a bit of a flatter lead wrist to hopefully neutralise that curvature. And predominantly, any time we've got a little bit of a cupped lead wrist, in Danny's case he has, we start to see a big differentiation between face and path. Now, in Danny's case, he's got a path that's too much to the left and a face that's pointing too much to the right. And if we have a look at him at the top of the backswing now, we'll see he creates a position that looks a little bit like this, a little bit of a cupped wrist. Now, in some cases, we can actually strengthen it on the downswing to potentially make a square of face, but in this case, he doesn't. So we're gonna talk about a nice simple feeling and a simple drill that we can take to the range to neutralize that curvature. Now, I think of uh, stopping a slice as two ways. One, like I said at the start of the video, neutralize that curvature and then start to work on face and path relationship, hopefully flipping it on its head to make an into out path with a closed face. So if I kind of make a demonstration to what we see with Danny's swing now, remember we see it's a little bit cupped and a path that's a little bit left. And as he goes through the bag, he starts to see more and more curvature and we'll explain that in a minute. So let's hit this one now. This is what we're kind of seeing with Danny. And this curvature happening way from left to right. Not quite getting the distance he wants, but ultimately too much curvature, and especially with his driver. Now, as we go through the bag, predominantly people that slice it with the shorter clubs, because there's a bit more loft on the face, backspin can have a bit more control of the golf ball. We can hopefully not backspin will outweigh side spin. As we start to lose loft, the spin axis of the golf ball is tilted a little bit easier. So especially if we get to a driver, or even in the old days we had that one iron, we would see a lot more curvature. And I always think of and explain this to people, think of Bubba Watson when they said, oh my God, he's, he's curved that ball with a wedge so much. And the reason why it was so impressive, I know it was from the trees and from the pine straw and he hit on the green, but it was even more impressive given the loft of the club. So like we see with a lot of slicers, as we go through the bag, we see a lot more curvature. So what I would always recommend is that we start with an iron and we build up to drive and we start to create those feelings. So without further ado, let's get into this week's nice simple tip to hopefully neutralize that curvature and ultimately just start hitting that pull shot to begin with. So we'll firstly do a grip check. And what I want to feel is that when we take this grip, we're gonna make sure we've got two and a half knuckles on our lead hand and this crease to my thumb, my forefinger, points into my right shoulder. From here, I want to do the same thing. I want to feel that I've got the crease between my thumb and my forefinger pointing back into my right shoulder. So we've got a nice blend of where we want these hands to be. We've got a relatively strong but neutral left hand. We've not got it weak and palmy. And we've got a nice right hand to complement it. And this is a really nice simple way. I'd hold it up into the air, fingers on, check the crease, put the right hand on or the trail hand in this case. So once we've done that, this is what I want you to feel. I want you to grab a tee peg. Now, if you're someone that wears a glove, this will be a lot easier for you. I want you to place a glove right in between that crease there. So it's gonna point out like a tee peg. So like we said before, we know Danny's got a path that's too much to the left, and we know that for the time being, but we wanna get a little bit more control of this face and hopefully start matching that face and that path to neutralize the curvature. So the feeling I want you to have now is that during this backswing, we're going to feel as though this tee is like Dustin Johnson. We're going to feel it points to the sky. Now, it's never going to feel that way, but that's going to hopefully create a position that looks like this, nice and flat, not cupped and open. So the feeling we're trying to create is that we're going to go nice and flat to the top, not nice and cupped. And having this visual, I think, really helps you get an understanding for what this does with the face. So it's really simple, nice and simple. What we're going to do is we're going to have two golf balls. We're going to hit one with a tee peg in 
and then we're going to hit one with the tee peg out to hopefully start to see and under understand what's actually happening in our golf swing. So how we're going to do this, address it, make sure we take that nice grip, hands on, feel like we're going to low go to the sky. So that's our over exaggerated move. In reality, we're going to be somewhere around here. There we go. A lot more distance and quite a nice strike. Just on the right edge of the green. So my feeling there and the feeling that I'd want Danny to take away is that my logo or my tee peg was pointing to the sky. So when we're doing the drill purposes, we can feel that the tee points to the sky now in the actual shot on the golf course. And that's why it's quite a transferable feeling. We can feel that the logo points to the sky. So again, on the golf course, we could build it into our pre-shot routine. Logo to the sky, swing through. Logo to the sky, swing through with a little bit more speed in an actual like a golf shot. Over the golf ball, my feeling again, swing thought, logo to the sky. There we go. Coming back now. I go pretty nice strike and definitely have a bit more of an understanding to what my face is doing. So if I show you a little bit closer here, Bowed, like Dustin Johnson, would create a very, very closed face. Cupped would create an open face. So we want to be in that halfway midpoint between. We want to feel, for Danny, we've got this lead wrist matching the lead forearm, and hopefully this club face is matching the lead wrist and the lead forearm, and ultimately stopping that face pointing excessively to the right at impact. We know that this face will hopefully be pointing in the same direction as his path out to the left. So ultimately, we want to end up hitting those pull shots and then once we've done that, we can start to adjust this bike wheel that's too much to the left, this direction, and hopefully start pointing it a little bit more down towards target. So when we're thinking about how we control this club face, ultimately we want to get to a place where if we were a slicer, we've got this face and path matching. At the minute, Danny's got a position where he's got his path to the left, and face is too much pointing to the right of target. That's ultimately causing his curvature be, to be excessive left to right. And as he gets with a longer club, like we said, that becomes even more exaggerated. So we're gonna start with an iron. We're gonna to start to understand that if we've got this cut position at the top, this face is more likely to be open. And we wanna look for a position where we've got this lead wrist and lead forearm being in a straighter and flatter position. And a nice simple visual, pop that tee peg in there and it'll really help us to start to understand this club face and ultimately all we've got to think about our golf game is it's an understanding of what our face and our path is doing at impact and we know that people swing it their own way and we can massage their own swings and have their own way of doing things but if you have an understanding of what our face and path is and hopefully we start to gain a little bit more of an understanding with a flatter lead wrist this will start to hit some better golf shots out on the golf course. Now I kind of look at the golf swing as kind of a building blocks. We've got to have good foundations and we build those foundations in to be able to create a good downswing. Now in Danny's case, at the top of his backswing, he's got a position that looks a little bit cupped. Now from this position here, it's I always think of it as an action to reaction. Now, if you're very cupped at the top, I think sometimes subconsciously, no matter what level of play you are, you know you've got a face that's open. So we try and counter that by swinging somewhat to the left, but ultimately, that has a negating effect in our golf game and we see even more curvature. So if we create a stronger position at the top of the backswing, so a flatter lead wrist, this will help us actually in time, hopefully start to adjust our feeling and subconsciously adjust our swing path to being a little bit more down towards target. Like I said, sometimes it's an action to reaction. So we start to fix the club face. Hopefully then we start to fix the path. Ultimately at this part in the season, we need to keep things simple. So a nice simple feeling of logo to the sky or tee peg to the sky will definitely help Danny improve his golf game. And if you're a slicer, improve your golf game too. So there you have it, this week's Sunday Swing Quest. Now, the three shots we hit there, the first was feeling a little bit cupped at the top of the backswing, which is what we see in Danny's golf game. Secondly, we had the tee peg in there, and that was us trying to feel as though we got the tee peg pointing towards the sky. And like we said, we need to understand that if we get that tee peg pointing towards the sky, that would create a very, very closed face at the top of the backswing. And then from there, we want to really actually be at that midway point of that lead wrist matching the lead forearm and that will definitely help us get a little bit more control of that club face from being very open to hopefully a little bit stronger if not closed. Now if someone that's slicing it actually starts hitting kind of a pull or anything that goes to the left I think they start to quite like that they start to get a feeling of what an actual strike is rather than that glancing blow it definitely feels more like a heavy blow club and ball together. 
So ultimately, that is what we do here on Sunday Swing Quest. Nice, simple tips to help people improve their golf game for the 2019 season. If you want to have your chance to enter, don't forget to comment below. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button to not miss any of the Sunday Swing Quest and all the other content going forward. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Oh,